This brings us to our ad acquisition pro forma journal entry. But before we do the journal entry, let's just have a look at why we're doing the journal entry. So if we're looking at the H limited group, so if we're looking at the consolidated financial statements, and in the consolidated financial statements, we can see that we have an investment in S limited. And remember from the previous lecture, we said that this is not an investment just in the shares. When H limited buys the shares of S limited, it doesn't buy just the shares, it buys the entire equity. It buys, in this case, not full equity, but it buys 80% of the equity of S Limited, not just 80% of the share capital of, of, of S Limited. Then in S Limited, we have all of the equity. Now, is this not the same thing? On the one In the one company, we have the investment in the equity, and in the other company, we have the actual equity. So because this is the same thing in the group financial statements, these two need to be eliminated. And that is exactly what we do at the in the ad acquisition journal entry. So in order to eliminate the investment in S Limited that is sitting in H's books, it's a, it's a debit in H's books, so we credit it in the ad acquisition journal. So we say investment in S Limited, and this is in the statement of financial position. Then we take all of the equity from S Limited and we eliminate that. So Equity is a credit, so in order to eliminate it, we would debit it. Share capital, which is equity, retain earnings, which is equity, and we have reserves, which is also equity. Okay, let's put our amounts in. So we've got here 20, 50, and 30. And we've got investment in S Limited at 120. Now, if you look at this in terms of um, what, what this entry is made up of, here we've got 100% of the equity of S. Is that right? And here, this investment in S Limited, because we only have an 80% shareholding, this is only 80% of S. Now, does this make sense to have 100% of the same thing on the one side and only 80% of it on the other side. No, it doesn't. So what we need to do now is bring in the other 20%. Now we know the other 20%, we call them the non-controlling interest. Those are the other shareholders in S. And non-controlling interest in this journal is always, always, always going to be a credit and it's always going to be to equity. So how do we calculate non-controlling interest? We can either calculate non-controlling interest as 20% of the entire 100% of S that we've brought in here, or we can calculate it as 20% of uh, this 120 that we brought in as 80% that was paid for H, that H limited paid for S. So if we use the S, the the equity amount, the total equity of S Limited, then we'll be using the partial goodwill method. And if we use the investment in S Limited, where we assume that the investment in S Limited is also the fair value uh, of S, then that is going to be called the full method or the fair value method, which we'll be doing in the next example. So for now, we're going to calculate the non-controlling interest as the value in proportion to the equity of S Limited. So the total equity of S Limited, if we add that up, is 100. 20% of 100 is 20. So we've got non-controlling interest of 20 on this side. If we have a look at this journal entry and see if it balances, on this side we've got 140. On this side we've got 140. And on this side we've got 100. Does our Journal balance, no it doesn't, it's out by 40. Whenever you, ha whenever you have an ad, ac ad acquisition journal entry that doesn't balance, it means that H Limited has paid more for, for S Limited than what S Limited is worth, and that creates a new line item called Goodwill. So what is Goodwill? It is basically the access, anything extra that H Limited pays when it acquires S Limited, and it's also the balancing entry in your ad acquisition journal. So in this case, we've got 40 as the balancing entry. If we now calculate our debits and our credits, we've got on both sides 140, and we're happy.
Okay, so next we're going to be looking at an example using the full Goodwill method.